coming along incredibly well. Today, I'd like to also provide an update on the actions of my administration and the work that we've done. We're taking, uh, really taking an increased interest, and we're seeing numbers that nobody can even believe in terms of percentage increase. It's telehealth for American patients. The, the percentage increase is being worked on right now, but it's very, very significant numbers that you would not even think possible. This has been a priority from the beginning of my administration when we launched an initiative to allow veterans to connect remotely with their VA health care team, and it worked out really well. We have a 91 percent approval rating in the VA in terms of uh, the job we're doing. This is the first. It's the highest ever recorded. Now, telehealth is a critical part of our path forward in the VA, and it's becoming a critical path, especially with our senior citizens. You don't have to go to the doctor's office. You don't have to go to hospitals. When the invisible enemy struck our shores, I took immediate action to eliminate regulatory barriers to telehealth, making it easier for patients to consult with doctors from safety and convenience and Really, uh, they have great safety and great convenience right from their homes. Today, I'm taking action to ensure telehealth is here to stay. Moments ago, in the Oval Office, I signed an executive order to make many of our regulatory reforms permanent. We've done some regulatory reforms that have had a tremendous impact on, on what we're doing, on medicine and medical and what we're doing. They can do things that you wouldn't believe that even a year ago, two years ago, would not have been doable. We're enshrining the right of American patients to meet with their medical providers in a way that is best for them and very, very convenient and very talented people on the other side of the line, I have to tell you. The order builds upon a series of actions we've all taken to make telehealth available to all. We ensured that Medicare covers telehealth visits at no additional cost. That's no additional cost. And co-payments can be waived for telehealth services. Uh, we are working very hard also on prescription drug prices. And I will tell you that the um, Favored Nations Clause that I've signed into existence, nobody thought anybody would ever do that, has a massive impact on prescription drug prices, uh, in addition to the three other elements of reduction of, of uh, drugs, particular prescription drugs. But the, uh, the favored nation's clause is massive. For instance, if Germany buys a pill for 10 cents a pill, as an example, just as an example, and the United States pays $2 for the same pill, we get the same privilege, the same right as they do. Never had that before. We paid all of the expenses, all of the research and development. So the uh, uh, the numbers are astronomical, and as you probably noticed, uh, big ads are taken against me by Big Pharma. Very big ads, very massive buy. Uh, but in the meantime, they're calling. They want to know if they can make a deal. And I say to people, the only reason these ads are being taken is because prices are coming down for you. And they understand that. I think our people understand that. But uh, in particular, when you look at uh, the matching, you could call it matching or you could call it favored nations, call it whatever you like. It's a tremendous, uh, it's going to have a tremendous, and I'm talking about 50, 60 percent, 70 percent. That doesn't mean it goes to 10 cents as an example, but theirs comes up and ours goes down. And you have many, many countries where uh, their numbers, the numbers are so low. I mean, so low, and by that I mean much lower than the United States. Another thing I'm doing is if a certain country like Canada, Canada buys for very much less than the United States has bought. How they allowed this to happen, representatives of our country standing at these podiums or in the Oval Office, how they allowed this to happen is just, to me, incredible. We've been working on this for a long time. I've been talking about it with Kaylee for a long time, right? So now uh, a governor like Ron DeSantis of Florida is doing a great job. Or, our great governor of Ohio or a great governor of any state can call up and buy the drugs directly from Canada at sometimes 50 percent less. So we'll be buying from Canada. Now, what the drug companies are going to do, maybe they'll raise them, maybe they'll lower them, or maybe they'll just give up and sell them to us directly much cheaper. So a lot of things are happening. Uh, also, the rebate. We have people that are very wealthy that 
Nobody ever heard of them. Nobody knows who they are. I guess in some cases they can be pharmacies. In some cases they're individuals. We're doing a rebate, and the rebate goes to the people. It lowers the price of drugs. So uh, we have uh, a series of four things that we signed, and you will see over a period of fairly short period, drug prices are going to be tumbling down at numbers that nobody would have ever believed possible. Uh, we have, in 51 years, the only time prices came down was during this administration. Uh, it was last year. 51 years it went up. Uh, but that was just a small decline. This is a massive decline. This is a decline that nobody can believe. I was called by senators. I was called by congressmen. Please don't do this. But uh, Big Pharma doesn't mean anything to me other than we want them to do a great job. We want them to get their vaccines. We want them to do what has to be done. So I think you're going to see drug price reductions over the next four or five or six months. It'll probably take a little while to kick in. That are going to be at numbers that you wouldn't believe. But in the meantime, they called on Friday afternoon. They want to meet, see if they can do something else. They don't like favored nations clauses. I understand that. We vastly expanded coverage, allowing Medicare to cover more than 135 new services through telehealth, by the way, including physical therapy, emergency department visits, home visits, mental health counseling, substance abuse treatment, which is a very big priority. We brought the substance abuse, at least prior to the China plague, or whatever you want to call it, we brought it down very substantially. Pediatric uh, critical care and much more. Thanks to our actions, an estimated $2 billion of additional funding will support Medicare patients receiving telehealth services. So a very, very big priority on telehealth. As part of the CARES Act, we secured $200 million to help health care providers and hospitals expand their telehealth. And they're all doing it. They're doing it gladly. Prior to the epidemic or the pandemic, whatever you want to say and how you want to refer to it. But par prior to the pandemic, uh, the telehealth was fine, but it wasn't anything raging. And I guess one of the only good things that we've gotten out of this whole horrible situation is telehealth has been incredible. And again, the increases are, uh, you know, many hundreds of uh, times greater than it was uh, before. Do you have a number? It's like 2,000 percent or something like that. It's an incredible, it's an incredible increase. You'll get the number, but it's, it's, uh, I think they have it now finally. And it's really an incredible. Thank you, Kaylee. We work with the leaders of major health insurance companies to ensure coverage for the telehealth visits related to coronavirus. We cut red tape to allow many services to be conducted by phone rather than video, which is much simpler providing a much easier option for many seniors in particular. 35 percent of the Medicare beneficiaries who receive telehealth services, or over 3.6 million seniors, did so over the phone. So you're talking about 6 .3 6.3.6 million seniors. That's something. 10.1 million Medicare beneficiaries have accessed care through telehealth since the beginning of the pandemic. So you're talking there, 10.1 million people. In April, over 43 percent of all Medicare primary care visits were done via telehealth, and compared to less than 0.1 uh, percent in February. Those are part of the numbers that I think I'll have you get them. So this part, you don't have to. You'll get the other, the other section. Thank you. So think of that. Compared to less than 0.1 percent, 0.1 percent. That's an incredible number. So over 43 percent of all Medicare primary care visits were done via telehealth compared to — so you went from 0.1 percent to 43 percent. That's an incredible uh, — it's an incredible number. The executive order I signed today will also expand health care access in rural America. We take care of rural America. It directs agencies to deploy strategic investments in our rural communications infrastructure. And we're working very hard with uh, all of the people in government that are involved with the communications infrastructure so that the, the telehealth gets uh, very quick and easy access. Additionally, revenue for rural providers varies significantly from month to month, making it difficult for many 
to stay in business. Many, many are having a very difficult time. To help fix this problem, my order will create a voluntary Medicare payment system that will give rural hospitals flexibility, really great flexibility, and a more consistent income stream to better serve their patients. Furthermore, I am directing the Department of Agriculture and Department